We really wanted to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. So yes, for us, and um, the real uh, event of 2012 is a Diamond Jubilee and the Olympics come later. But yes, we really wanted to celebrate that. It's been about five years in the planning this project. So today is a really exciting day. And when we open to the public on Monday, the 26th of March, we just can't wait to get open again. Kensington Palace, I don't think many people thought it was open actually before. So one of the parts of the project has been really to open up the palace to the park. And so all those tens of millions of people who walk up and down the Broadwalk and Kensington Gardens every year will be able to see quite clearly that Kensington's open. And yes, I think there's a fantastic job that the modern royals are doing to really put London on the map in this Olympic year. And also you might catch a glimpse of them if you come here. Well, Kensington has always been London's secret, really. People haven't realised you can come in and see some of London's grandest interiors, but the attraction is also the human stories of the members of the royal family who've lived here, particularly princesses. This place is packed with interesting princesses. Of course, Princess Diana is probably the most famous resident from the history of Kensington Palace. We have a new display of her dresses, beautiful dresses, five of them. Three of them have never been seen before. And they tell the story of the evolution of her style. The earliest one, 1981, it's quite pretty, it's quite fancy, she's a Sloan Ranger. And then you see her turning into 1995, a slick, sophisticated international style icon wearing Versace. The present Diana display will be here all through the summer. Then it will change into something else, but we will always have royal dress, princesses' dresses on display here. That's the strength of the collection at Kensington Palace. 